you don't have uh, any reason to. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, vielen Dank für, für, die, für Ihre Einladung und dafür, dass auch Sie da sind, uh, weil Sie konnten zu Hause bleiben, natürlich. Und uh, so, danke sehr. Es ist für mich eine Ehre, mit, uh, mit Ihnen sich zu treffen und uh, mich zu teilen uh, über diese Informationen, uh, über heutige Probleme. Uh, und ich hatte oder ich habe uh, die Möglichkeit bekommen, uh, die Sprache sich auszuwählen, in welcher Sprache ich den Vortrag halten werde. Und verzeihen Sie mir, obwohl, obwohl meine erste Fremdsprache Deutsch ist, ich habe mich für, für Englisch entschlossen, äh, äh, denn ich heute nicht so häufig Deutsch benutze und sowohl auch alle Unterlagen ich Englisch ich habe, dann werde ich meinen Vortrag in Englisch halten. Verzeihen Sie mir, oh, äh, und dann Englisch ist mein second, uh, second language, uh, zweite Fremdsprache. Dann bitte um Geduld, um Verständnis und vielleicht auch um Hilfe <lacht> mit meinem Englisch. Okay, danke. Also, as a parents and teachers today, we face challenges that we were once not considered challenges at all. To tell the young people the truth about human beings. Today, more than ever, this is necessary to talk young people about the identity of men and women, the identity of human being. That is why uh, about four years ago, I started writing a book for teachers and parents about how to talk to young people about sexuality, about relationships, uh, the anthropology of men, about human identity. Since the book was published last year, I have met with over 3,000 teachers and parents, 2,500 young people, and I have received many questions to which we have together searched for answers. Today, I want to share this experience of mine with you so that we can inspire and enrich each other. Okay. Actually, the basic rule of what I recommend is first say nice things to the children, not problem things. And if we are talking to small children, we only answer questions. Uh, what I tell <laughs> children about, about the biological differences between male and female when life begins, facts about sex, male, female characteristics, behavior, research, hormone levels, body structure, and so on, about ge gender identity, sexual attraction, about depth during adolescence, and on the importance of friendship. The challenges ahead uh, that we have are easier and more difficult, easier are to learn a certain amount of information and transfer <laughs> it to the children. More difficult challenges are to win the hearts of the young, to convince them that we mean it well with them, and to keep their attention, you know, perhaps as teachers. Okay, questions or attitudes that children, young people express very often is, for example, is there any research that can prove that life begins at conception? Proof, hoppa. Proof that sex is genetically defined at the moment of conception. On what sample of respond respondents was this research conducted? It was questioned in primary school. Disagreement with the definition of typically feminine and masculine characteristics, rejection of so-called stereotypes, gender stereotypes. Claiming to be feminist. In one lecture, a 14-year-old boy said he disagreed with me because he was a feminist. Believing that sex can, can be changed today, that they have fresher information than I do. And feelings. But what if feels that way? But, uh, what if I feel that way? Feelings are elevated to the highest level. They are considered the only benchmark. Children spend Many, more, many times more time on the social networks than we do, and they are manipulated by various influencers. What I ask students, when does life begin? When is sex genetically defined from who does sex depend? And where is your genome kept? By asking and answering these questions, the children should realize that life is created at conception. 
that the genetic sex is defined at the moment of conception, when the entire genetic equipment of human being is created. And that today your entire genome, uh, your entire genetic equipment is hidden in each of your cells, it nucleus of the cell. Then I ask in what, what ways are differences between men and women? Do you realize that differences between the male and female sexes are marked in several areas? For example, in body dimorphism, in morphology, uh, in genitalia, shape of bones and skull, ratio of muscle to fat mass, fat distribution. Males have wider frontal bone, temporal bone, jaw bone. Females have wider pelvis. Males have an arced frontal bone, supraorbital arc. Females have straight frontal bone. Supposedly, this is considered the most reli reliable secondary sex characteristic to the extent that if they would find a corpse even after 100 years, they would be able to identify whether it was male or female by the frontal bone. Next, in sex hormones, we are different. Men and women have both hormones, testosterone and estrogen, but at different levels. A man has 10 to 50 times as much, testo as much testosterone as women. We are different in thinking, cognitive dimorphism. Men have different areas of the brain populated by a denser structure of no neurons than women. women. For example, the part of brain responsible for orientation in space is more densely populated in men, while the part of the brain responsible for verbal skills is more densely inhabited in women's brain. Next one, we are different in behavior. In practice, this manifests itself in the way that while the man remembers the road and its directions well, the woman notices details along the way. But most importantly is she is usually more verbally and socially skilled. Okay, we are different also in the perception of external stimulation and internal experience. Men and women are differently conf configured beings programmed by their genes to fulfill their reproductive mission. Sex hormones are also have important function, function in protecting our health. They have organizing and activating effect. Estrogen is responsible for the protection of organs and functions associated with motherhood, fat distribution in the pelvic area, prevention of cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis. This is very, really very important, uh, this uh, pre uh, prevention function or protection function of, of estrogen. Provides psychological endowments related to maternal instincts and care of fetus and child, mental balance and well-being. Testosterone influence brain architecture already during prenatal development and becomes apparent shortly after birth. It is important in the period of gonadal sex formation. It qualifies the male to instill sense of protection and security in the future mother by his masculine appearance. And also testosterone protects the man's health, preventing blood thickening. And what properties are uh, responsible for estrogen and testosterone? Estrogen, for example, for cooperation, carefulness, submissiveness, you can see emotionality, maternal intuition, testosterone for competitiveness, adventureship, dominance, rational calculation, assertiveness. On this topic, children tend to protest but we are talking about hormones, not people. I explained to children that it is about hormones. That's, that's, this, is, this is the mystery of why we are different, men and women, but even within the same sex. Why we are different, original, there are different nuances between us. But what does it mean if hormone levels are different? That we are different in many, many areas. That means if woman has elevated testosterone levels, it doesn't mean she has to be androgynous or that she's lesbian, much less that she should have 
sex, gen sex gen change. It means that she may be ambitious with the tendency to be assertive, achievement-oriented, have leadership tendencies, be less communicative as a rule, and choose not to pursue charitable professions, but rather technical and system-oriented professions. In view, may have more masculine body type. If a man has lower testosterone level, it doesn't mean he's gay, and certainly not that he should have gender change, but he may be predisposed to the arts, to the humanities, to the social sciences. He may be more empathetic and social. He may be a good doctor, artist, psychologist, priest. He may be a good husband. When do behavioral differences between men and women start to appear? What do you think? When? Very well. Ah, great. Yes, you knew it already in Budapest, I, I think. <laughs> okay. Professor Simon Baron Cohen from Cambridge University, really the big expert on autism, has carried out research on newborn babies, only one day old. The present study aimed to find out whether the sexual dimorphism is a result of biological or social cultural differences between the two sexes. 102 human neonates who have not yet been influenced by social and cultural factors were tested to see if there was a difference in looking time at face as a social object and mechanical object. Results showed that the male infants showed a stronger interest in the physical mechanical object, while the female infants showed a strong, stronger interest in the face. The results of this research clearly demonstrate the sex differences are in part biological in origin. Really, more girls looked longer at the face and more boys on mechanical object. And if we go even further, uh, further, then already in the 14th week of pregnancy, girls move their jaw more often. <laughs> Okay, and what about gender identity and its crisis? We must speak and explain the truth to children. I ask children, where is genetic information about your sex stored today? In every cell, of course, in the nucleus of the cell. So if every cell in your body carries the information that you are a woman, if you had your bre breasts surgically removed, would you become a man? It is possible to change sex? Here sometimes some young people answer that yes. And so I ask them, how can it be changed? And they themselves nicely, very nicely come to what can actually be done. They say, something can be surgically imitated to make one resemble, look, look like the other sex. And those are the right words, to imitate, to resemble. Surgically, we can remove or remodel something. Hormonally, we can stop or start something. But genetically, there is no chance to change sex. It is mutilation of a healthy body. The sex cannot be changed. The psychological development, as well as brain development, ends around the age of 26. Thus, the end of adolescence is placed by psychologists at the age of 26. Therefore, a child and young person is not supposed to make any conclusion about his or her, or her sexual orientation or desire for a change in gender identity until adulthood, that means until the age of 26. The psychological searching for gender identity is a process that develops from birth, and both parents and society have stake in it, and determined by unconscious motives, anxieties, and defensive processing of various traumas. <coughs> this problem needs to be addressed comprehensively in the context of biopsychosocial framework. The young person cannot be, cannot be left alone in this 
but needs to be guided by a person with both wisdom and correct scientific knowledge, with regular and long-term professional psychotherapeutic help. And what is the scientific answer? The Czech Society for Psychoanalytic Psychotherapy on the Treatment of Gender Dysphoria says that we must warn what the so-called sex change will cause. Irreversibility of physical damage, the risk of undesirable effects, side effects of hormonal and surgical interventions, possible significant deterioration of the psychological state, increased risk of suicidality and disability. What does, what does it mean, irreversibility of physical damage mean? Breast amputation, removal of the mammary glands, amputation of penis and testicles, sterilization, genital sexually non-functional. What side, side effects can cause opposite hormones? Hypertension, heart failure, cancer, mainly genitali, genital, thromboembolic disease, blockage of blood vessels, headaches, irritability, infertility, reduced bone density till osteoporosis, brain maldevelopment, insulin resistance posing additional risk such as rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, sleep apnoe syndrome, edema, worsening of liver parameters up to end, including toxic liver damage. And now small test for you. <laughs> what do you think? Where did I get the information about the adverse side effects of hormone transition from? You can choose. Okay, and type, middle one. Okay, it's logical, but surprise is that I have it from the website of Ministry of Health Slovak Republic. This is why I'm asking actually, because people mainly think they are th thinking that this is from American Conference Bishops or American website on sexuality and so on. But really, this is from the standards for the comprehensive management on so-called gender reassignment that promote so-called gender reassignment. They write about this and other side effects. Do you understand? OK, come on, next one. Increased risk of suicidality and disability. There are statistics on the high number of suicidal tendencies in people who have had sex change or who have made coming out before adulthood. It is recommended to postpone coming out and thinking about so-called sex change until as late as possible, because the earlier the coming out, the higher the suicidal tendency. Uh, actually, I have uh, own experience with, with one of my friend. Uh, she's mother of 16-year-old boy. Uh, and she told me that uh, his son, uh, her son uh, told her she wa he was uh, homosexual and he has a uh, lot of uh, psych psychological problems and uh, really so big psychological problems that she uh, contacted first psycho psychologist who was uh, available because in Slovakia uh, we have actually uh, a few of psychologists, uh, they, are, they are able to, to treat this diagnosis or these problems and uh, there is a very long time to, to get appointment. And that means she took first psychologist, he, he, was, she, he was free, and he, recommend, he recommended him, this boy, uh, to do coming out. And he, 16 year old boy, did coming out. That means he, uh, he told this uh, in front of uh, their, uh, his friends, I am gay. And his mother told me uh, he lost 
all old friends. And she was crying, the mother. And I told her, if I wouldn't have any scientific, uh, scientific uh, knowledge about this uh, topic, common sense, common sense would, would tell me that children in this age, they are not mature to, to treat, to, to process such information. They need to time to, uh, to be crystallized in, sec in their own sexuality. Uh, they are not mature. This is not homophobia. They are not mature to process this information. Okay, can the surgery help? Actually, my next research, between 1973 and 2003, one Swedish researcher, Cecilia Deine, carried out longitudinal research in Sweden to estimate mortality, morbidity, and criminal rate after surgical sex reassignment re of transsexual persons. The research conclusions say that persons with transsexualism after sex reassignment have considerably higher risks for mortality than the general population. In the case of suicide, this risk is up to 19 times higher. So which people suffer more from psychological problems? Those who have not undergone transition, chemical or surgical, or those who have undergone chemical or surgical transition? Sweden researchers Brainstorm and Pachankis wanted to prove that people who those have undergone, undergone chemical or surgical transition feel better. And then have analyzed the medical records between 2005 and 2015 of almost 3,000 Swedes to whom had been diagnosed the gender dysphoria. Researchers compared people who have undergone transition, chemical or surgical, with them who have not undergone this. But the result was that the taking hormones alone during the transition process does not affect overall mental health, and even surgical transition does not have a positive impact on the mental health of the subjects. Here is a graph showing the differences in mental health between those with gender identity disorder who have undergone surgery and those who have not. With surgery is the black one. Okay, despite of this, affirmative therapy is still being promoted to today. And wo what is actually affirmative therapy? This is affirming person's feeling, even when they are deeply contradicted with biological reality. And this appears to be an easier path, but without evidence of measurable results. Recently, a Finnish psychiatrist, chief psychiatrist actually in a university hospital in Tampere, Dr. Rita Kertukaltiala, who founded Gender Clinic in Finland, has given more than 500 assessments to people with gender dysphoria, and she made observation results public, her observation results public. Dr. Kaltiala said, gender affirming care is dangerous. I know it because I helped pioneer it. Dr. Kaltiala says she gradually found, found out that people had more psychological problems after surgery than before it. That affirmative therapy and surgical changes did not help treat psychological problems. So let's go to the point. If a person is dealing with gender reassignment, there are serious issues behind it. There may be trauma behind it, long ago or only recently. Stress, loss of loved one, bullying, an invisible child, at home or school, one in masculinity, one with femininity, unconfirmed masculinity, unconfirmed femininity, sexual abuse, and mostly it is a combination of several factors. We need to draw to the deep, find the reason and heal the reason. 
and now no, uh, briefly about adolescence. What about sexual attraction in adolescence? Who does normally like girls? Who, who do boys normally like? Girls, you know, this is my presentation, boy. <laughs> boys normally like, okay. Uh, it, is, is, it is in our nature that girls like boys and boys like girls. But it may be that this is not the case in adolescence. The first sexual desire may not be directed towards the opposite sex because the adolescent is seeking his, his ideal of beauty, his ideal of masculinity, femininity, seeking his identity. Girls may earlier, boys later, go through so-called homoerotic phase, which is an intermediate temporary phase related to adolescence and in almost every person it will disappear by the period of adulthood. Okay, if boy or girl feels that likes a person of one's own sex, there is no need to give much weight to momentary feelings and one should wait for sexual interest to become crystallized. What could be reason, actually? Children need to be warned that sometimes a person may fall victim to sexual seduction or experiment out of curiosity or in situation of isolation for persons of the opposite sex are trying to homosexual practices. There are studies in which homosexuals themselves report that they have been directed towards such a life by negative influences in their early childhood, in the family and in the environment in which they grew up. What is the scientific answer? Dutch psychologist, psychoanalyst and psychotherapist, Dr. Gerard Ardwerk, Ardwerk, who has been working on the issue of homosexuality for 45 years, both practically and scientifically, states in his professional writings that there is no scientific evidence that homosexuality is cause, caused by hormones, genes or specificities of the brain. There has not been proven the homosexuality gene. Scientific research does not support the hypothesis that homosexual orientation is immutable and inborn. On the contrary, there are testimonies of people who sometimes, sometimes in the past left attraction to the same sex and after proper guidance by a professional lived a proper heterosexual life. The next one, the most extensive genetic research on homosexuality has been conducted in 2019 on a sample of more than 4,477,000 respondents. Its findings were published in the top scientific journal Science. The results of this research are commented by its author Andrew Agana as follows. There is no gay gene. The sexual behavior is influenced by genetics at most up to 25% and the majority is influenced by environmental and cultural factors. That means that other influences play a large role, cultural, social, family, family and individual experience. So if a child or a young person in his or her teens has confided in us that he or she feels same-sex interaction, it is not appropriate to conclude that he or she is homosexual. Just the very opposite. It is necessary to accompany them in this transitional period, to reassure them that it may be temporary, short-lived, and that in time his sexual preferences will crystallize. Child and young person is not to make any inferences about his or her sexual preferences or, or desire for change in gender identity until adulthood, as we described above, at least until the age of 26. Although the homosexual gene has not been proven, we must say in truth that these people live among us. These are our friends and we are to treat them with respect and love. Respecting, respecting 
the dignity of every human being. Actually, what is then our task? To investigate, search for the cause, to help the children heal once, accompany, not to judge. How to help them, to allow, to be merciful, to try to understand, to take time to talk with the child, to try to find out the cause, early childhood problem, trauma, problem in the family, now absence of the strong bond with parents and so on. Calm and, re and reassure the child. It's normal to like people of your own gender now. Do you know what changes are happening in your body now? You are now getting to know both sexes, thinking about the advantages, disadvantages, looking for role models in your own sex, looking for friends. All this is normal. You may be going through a homoerotic fa fa phase and so on. Maybe even try a little psychotherapy. Let the child calm down, quiet down. Think about when he first felt it, experienced it. Maybe he will figure out that it's normal human reaction. Maybe he will figure out that, that he has been hurt before. Hurt by something, hurt by someone. Maybe he just needs to talk his way out of it and navigate, help, help direct him how to try to behave, how to perceive people. Let's just love people and guide the kids to do that too. Don't push so-called gender stereotypes. Girl doesn't have to wear skirts and boy doesn't have to be a tough boy. Woman doesn't have to be only gentle. She doesn't have to study only human directions and still remain a girl. Boy can be a gentle and communicative gentleman and still remain a boy or man. And what is important to explain to children, explain, explain that sex, biological gender, cannot be changed. At the moment of conception, the male or female sex is once and for all determined. And this, is, this can never be changed by surgery or hormonal treatment. And our main task is to calm down the teenage children and to collaborate with professionals. And if we can, pray for them. I could conclude with a few of examples from life. I will mention at least one or two of them. For example, Daniel Black. Daniel Black is a young man from Czech Republic. He is a hard dresser. I know him personally. <coughs> Daniel had a number of psychological problems, including a gender identity crisis. When he was 16, he asked for sex change. When he was 18, he underwent a genital amputation. One year later, he regretted it very much. Today, he tells his story publicly to warn young people not to be deceived. He says, I did a big mistake. I am a boy, and I had my genitals changed into girls. What I say has nothing to do with faith. I am an atheist. These are just the facts. Daniel wants to protect children from this lie. In an interview for the portal Nove Mesto, Newtown, Daniel says, it is shocking what people think about the process of transitions. They assume that during a tra transition, the patient first goes through biological tests and several years of psychotherapy. But this is not the case. The re reality is completely different. You get a diagnosis in half an hour, hormones in a month, and surgery in a year and a half. Interestingly, even my clients, they are healthcare professionals, are surprised when I describe to them how it really works. Even the doctors from other fields have no idea what is seriously going on. And what advice would Daniel give to parents dealing with an identity crisis with their child? Don't encourage your children to have transsexual ten tendencies. Don't approach them in a different gender, but take them immediately to a good psychotherapist who will aim to discover the real reason why the child doesn't feel comfortable in their so social role. By encouraging children to be in transition, you are making it harder for them, putting their physical and psychological health at risk. 
In this case, your child will never be able to lead, to, to lead a normal life again. And may I add one more example from life? Last, okay, last one. I'm at the, at the end. Okay, very shortly, what I actually men mentioned in Vienna, uh, in Budapest, but very shortly also here in Vienna. I was contacted by a mother of 16-year-old son. Let's call him Robert. It's another uh, cause, as I mentioned already. Robert hated his male gender and wanted to get transitioned into a woman. We talked with this mom for a long time together, searching for the cause. I asked when Robert began to have doubts about this, his identity. The answer was that this crisis came with the beginning of adolescence. Robert used to say he didn't like his male body until at 16 he said he hated his male body. I then asked the mother to go back deep in her memory to think if there was some period in Robert's childhood when he began to express himself or behave differently than he had before. Some period, period when he, there was a problem with Robert, with his behavior. Mommy answered very quickly, I know it exactly. I don't even have to think about it. When he was four years old, she said. And so we search out, search for what happened then. That's when Robert's sister was born and his grandfather died. Sister was born. The little sister naturally was given increased attention in the family. And his grandfather, with whom Robert had wonderful relationship, died. His grandfather had been with them all the time before. They were always playing together and suddenly he got sick, got cancer and died. He died young. Robert, Robert can't, cannot forget him. He remembers him every day. Robert must have made the assessment in his childish little head that men die young. And when he started to become a man, he was afraid of it and so he denied his manhood to the point that he wanted to erase the manhood from his, his life completely. Today he probably doesn't even know why. He just says he doesn't want to be a man. So I offered this mom to contact a psychologist who could accompany them. I called the psychologist right after our conversation and told her what was going on. In response, the psychology professor said a memorable and powerful sentence for me. When a boy forgives, great things will be able to happen in his life. Forgiveness. Often young people stand before us insecure, confused, overwhelmed, broken, who have done nothing wrong, they were not guilty. On the contrary, they have experienced trauma that has hurt them. These are situations that we cannot under or reverse. And so the first step, the only way is forgiveness. Forgiveness heals, recovers, restores. Forgiveness often brings new life and answers to difficult questions. And at the end, let me conclude with some recommended websites. X out loud, change moment, I will explain short. Courage.org, this is Slovak website, Uchitom Sechlan Traxen, okay. Uh, X out loud is actually movement in England. Uh, there are people who felt uh, homosexuality, uh, but they decided to change. Actually, I have a couple of books with testimonies from them uh, this, uh, on the table. You can buy it if you want, if you would like. Uh, these people were last week in Slovakia, Victor, Liam, and also Kia and Tiran. And uh, every story has its roots in childhood. Very, very strong stories. Uh, then very similar uh, movement is also in the United States, change movement. Uh, also, I know personally uh, Ken and Elizabeth, very, very, very strong, powerful story they have also. 
I could uh, recommend also, for example, documents, some documents, the transitional testim testimony, Zoe, Chloe, uh, Walt Heyer, is, I was transgender and I regret that. And then, uh, for example, documentary, what is a woman, you know, it per, uh, perhaps. And the documentary, the, transi the transition diaries, quite new documents. And uh, very new documents uh, from last year or for, for this year, I, I, I think, <coughs> is behind the looking gla glass, a uh, documentary about the wives and children of trans identified men. You can find it at Lime Soda Films. <laughs> Normally on, bless. <laughs> Normally on webs uh, on YouTube, it is not possible to find it out. Okay, thank you for your patience, for your attention, for your time. <laughs>